right, guys, welcome to another special episode of Esoteric Atlanta. Um, I'm so excited today. I have my friend Adam here. Adam is also a part of the hey. Esoteric Atlanta community. Um, a lot of you guys probably recognize him. He sent a video clipping about his experience in Hawaii a couple of weeks ago, which was awesome That's about right. some legends in Hawaii. And Adam is also, for you guys who look in the description box every video, his novel is always placed in the description box. A few months ago, we explored the um, the very vast topic of multiverses and the Mandela effect. And Adam has written a novel about it. And this is a topic that I'm really, really fascinated in because I personally don't believe it. Reality is what we what we think it is. Um, there's way more to this matrix than we actually know. And so Adam has some really awesome opinions. And I love hearing other people's opinions and their experiences in our world that we share together. And so welcome to the show, Adam. Thanks, Bryce. Thanks for having me. Um, for starters, do you want to tell anybody a little bit about your about yourself, your background? Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm Polish, uh, but my background is international. Uh, part of my family was from the U.S., which is partly the reason why I was inspired to write my novel, because our ways diverged uh, many, many years ago, before the Second World War, actually. But I still know that they were there in New Jersey, to be exact. And that's uh, basically, uh, I'm interested in languages. I'm a linguist which is why I'm fascinated by how languages shape our minds. And um, that's, well, I'm a traveler. Well, right now I can't travel, right, because of COVID, whatever you think about it. But it's, uh, it's you know, we can't really move anywhere. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's about me. And I like tennis. Yeah, I like tennis. So. <laughs> yeah. I grew up in a tennis family, too. So... Um. <laughs> So before we get into your novel, um, for those who are new to the channel, and I will link in the description box below not only all of Adam's contacts, but I will also link videos that we've done in the past over multiverses. So if somebody's new to this channel and they have no idea what a multiverse is, will you explain to our viewers what a multiverse is? Yeah, the way I see it, because there are very, very many theories, right? But the way I see it, anything you can imagine happens somewhere in some kind of reality. Basically, every second we make decisions, right, in our lives, and there is a new reality created. And I realize it may sound, you know, esoteric in many ways, because we just experience one reality, but actually, when you think about it, I think it's fascinating that there could be an infinite number of realities, and they exist concurrently, simultaneously, right? That's actually what physicists are talking about now, so it's not just some fiction. It's actually quite possible that that's the case. And I find it fascinating because you can think about anything you want and then you think about, okay, uh, what if I exist here? What if I exist there? What if I get snatched somewhere else, right? It taken somewhere else, for example. This is really, it's fascinating. Or even the topic of schizophrenia, right? Uh, what, what is that? Could it be that we experience it somehow, that some people experience it and they can't tune it out and that's why they, you know, their, their senses get messed up. It's, it's, it's a fascinating topic, essentially. Absolutely. It's absolutely fascinating. And I know when I was studying, um, for every topic I cover, I do so much more research than I actually present on this show, as most people, probably as you have done with your writing and most people do that create content. Yeah. Your research oh, yeah. is just so much more than you actually present. And I read countless stories of people who had experienced this idea of a multiverse where they fell into right. an alternate reality where they existed as well, but the people and the situations were a little bit Very different. Yeah, and it, it, dramatically different. Yeah, yeah. It, it's when people have these experiences, it's it's life changing um, mm -hmm. for people because it shakes your your world. The comfort of your world is is sh is shook a little bit. So you have to kind of That's accept right. there, there's a different possibility out there. Um, have you had any experiences where you think you shifted into in and out of a different dimension or multiverse? Well. I would say that it could be the case, yes, uh, and I kind of describe it in the novel, but of course it's fiction, right, when, when I, where I hypothesize what could happen. Uh, but experiences like that, when we talk about the Mandela effect, whether it's real or not, it's difficult to tell. Uh, but to prove it 100%, uh, I can't, of course, but I would really like to believe that's the case. For example, I had some EVPs, you know, electronic uh, voice phenomenon, and I was thinking whether it's possible that it's, what are ghosts, right, could it be that I'm recording somehow uh, some alternate reality, right? In my novel, I sort of touch upon this topic where I mentioned that, you know, there are these absurdist parts where people are snatched and they are taken somewhere else. I have this funny German part where people are taken and they are 
turned into Germans and they have this pencil skirt uniforms, stilettos, uh, they get German names and it's absurdist, right? Because it's to show that, uh, you know, what happens, right? In, in some Kafka-esque scenario, like you, Kafka wrote in the Metamorphosis, right? Where uh, the main, uh, the hero turned, uh, the protagonist turned into a cockroach, basically. And so mm -hmm. I kind of played on that, right? I imagine what would happen if I got snatched like this, right? Somewhere, what would, how would my life change? What, my, what would my perspective be like, right? Or when I went back, right, here to our reality, uh, what would happen, right? So this is a fascinating topic. But to really tell you that if I could prove in court, no, I don't really have that kind of experience, unfortunately. But I would definitely, definitely enjoy it uh, if, I, if I could have that kind of experience because it would validate so much, right? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And saying there's no way I could prove this, any of this in court as well. But it is, there, especially when you read other people's experiences, and we've all had you know, moments of deja vu, or we'll, we'll get into the um, the Mandel effect a little bit into this, because that also plays into that as well. And a lot of us have yeah. experienced these kind of phenomenons where you're sitting there and how you remember. And with the Mandel effect, yeah. it's like, it's not just you remembering something that's happened differently than like the narrative is today, but it's usually not just you. Because if it's just you, it could be a misremembering, but there will be people all over the world that you don't know. Exactly that will yeah. carry the exact same memory as you. And so who knows, like if, if that means that there's multiverses happening or if there's like a skip in the timeline or people can travel back in time and change things. Exactly, and if I may stop here, for example, in my novel, that's what I, what I thought, what I write about, that you have a scenario where you are not in contact with, let's say with your family member, right? And let's say you have this chance that you cross over to some other reality. And there is this person, you may not even know that you crossed over and suddenly you are in touch, right? You are somewhere and there are no issues and suddenly you, what's going on here, right? And then when you realize, and the second option is when you do that on purpose. And then I have what I call existentialist cheating. When some people can experience, well, moral dilemmas, right? Because they are pretending to be someone else in essence, right? Mm -hmm. They are themselves yet not themselves. So you know what I'm saying, right? So this yeah. other person sees you and they don't know that. Right. So I, I think that's that's really a very, very interesting topic in itself. Right. And what that, that kind of uh, touches upon the Mandela effect, I guess, because people change their personalities. Right. In some cases, of course, it could be natural, but it could be even more, you know, interesting. Yeah. And will you tell our, our viewers, I know some of them have heard me talk about it. Where does the Mandela effect get its name? Can you explain to them the story? Yeah, this is the uh, Mandela, of course, was the South African hero, right? And he died and I don't remember exactly when the diversion was, but uh, people basically say that he died in different years, right? So some people say that that in the 80, 80s, I think, some other people, people say it's from, in, like remember him dying in prison. Yeah, in prison and others would tell you that it's not the case, you know, and, and basically that's where it stems from, right? And then, yeah. it, uh, then it basically touches on every other aspect of reality. Right, and uh, there's this Berenstein, right? Berenstein, right? The the, uh, yeah. the one yeah, here. Years. But, yeah. but you know, I'm trying. I try to look at this topic on like the middle ground, let's say. So the psychiatrists and psychologists, they could be onto something as well. It could be as misremembering things that we just uh, want to ascribe meaning where there is none. So it's kind of difficult to tell whether it's actually real, right? But it's definitely fascinating because there are so many aspects to our identity, right? That's what I write about it, in, a, in a sense. That, of course, the uh, Mandela effect is definitely part of it. It's, it's a part of this this topic, definitely. And I know, um, you know, as we we move, you know, we've talked about on Esoteric Atlanta. We've, you know, for people who follow astrology, these we were moving oh, yeah. out of the age of Pisces into the age of Aquarius. So our timeline is is switching in a sense. And they exactly. Are and and if I may, and, and the Chinese astrology is even different, right? Because I have some uh, Chinese connections as well, and this is interesting as well. I think the year of the ox is mm -hmm. upon us now, and uh, they have a, a different view. Uh, and and if I may add here, because what I've noticed with some people is that it's kind of weird because they are so they believe in astrology so much that they would mm -hmm. actually say, "I'm not going to be with that person. I'm not going to interact with that person because they are." A Gemini or something like this is just right. like taking this to another level, <laughs> right? And I will say too, because people who are like that, yeah, you are missing part of the point because we are so multifaceted as humans. If you do, and I, I know a good bit about astrology, but I also um, had my Vedic chart done, which is from the east, and it's a little yeah. bit different. 
you know, so there's nothing's ever really set in stone. There's always shades of gray. And, and yeah. if you're looking at your own personal astrology, you have moon signs, sun signs. There's all sorts of different elements that create you. And yeah. we, I know scientists will say that we have 97% junk DNA, which I don't believe is actually junk. I believe yeah. that there's something to that. And then when you get there into this. For a reason, definitely. Yeah. Right. And then you get into this whole, like when you, when you start to look at the idea of multiverses, you also get into the idea of time travel, of um, what is what is time really, which you start to get into yeah. Einstein stuff. And then you get into Tesla stuff. Um, yeah. And actually, uh, if I may, uh, there was the uh, John Titter. He was uh, kind of a, um, some forums, right, many years ago, this kind of alleged traveler, time traveler, right? He mentioned that, well, I, I like this idea that when you time travel, you're actually going to another dimension. It's not really that you're going back. So, for example, if you wanted to kill your grandfather, right, that what would happen, you would just create another reality where this grandfather mm -hmm. would be dead, but it wouldn't be like here, right? You know, right. they would just split. So that's what, I, what, that's what I like, that you're actually traveling between dimensions. It seems like mm -hmm. you're going back in time or forward, but actually... You're not. You're just uh, traveling in different, to different dimensions. I like this idea, personally. Yeah. There's a lot of, um, um, cause I spent a lot of time in India deeply studying, spent my life deeply studying, um, you know, the Upanishads and all these deep uh, old in Indian um, texts, which I know uh, Albert Einstein studied them a lot as well. And, and there is this kind of theory that time is not linear, that yeah. it, it, it is dimensional. And um, especially, I know growing up in Poland, you probably have this as well, but growing up here in the South and in America, my, my mom's family is from Charleston, South Carolina, very haunted city. We have experience with ghosts. Oh, yeah. Ton of videos on my channel about ghost stories, and that is also a theory as well that you just you just mentioned earlier that yeah. it's not ghosts you're experiencing, but it's it's like it's like a different time dimension of reality happening concurrently with the yeah. modern time we're in now. You know, this place is perfect for hauntings. I mean, this this country's history is so mm -hmm. crazy. It's yeah. so, I mean, it's so insane. Like you, when you look even at Warsaw, that was basically destroyed, 85% was just destroyed, 200,000 people dead, uh, even mm -hmm. in the city alone. This is, you know, if you want to find ghosts or hauntings, that's the place, I'm telling you. It's like mm -hmm. even the name Warsaw, it really did see war. I mean, this is crazy mm -hmm. when you think about it. So, um, so yeah, there are even uh, graveyards here, right? People fought uh, the Nazis, basically. Yeah, that's this is crazy, right? So when you when you experience that, like that's why I recorded my EVP uh, in two thousand and three, actually. And what was interesting is that it was addressing me directly. It was a female voice, and the way it structured itself, it inserted itself in between a uh, people. Like they were live voices. Like I could identify. I could, could hear it, right? Because there were normal people talking, alive people talking. And then there was this voice, and it was like a melodic voice, floating voice. It was really, really interesting. It was definitely some sort of intelligence behind it, whatever it was. And I found it fascinating. And that's why I, when I thought, what is that? Is it some kind of, you know, I'm, I just want to hear it because that's, that was my intention? Or is it just some kind of other connection here? What could it be, right? Just speculation, but it's fascinating, right. I it's and it's all and that's one thing too, guys. That we were all we're all just speculating, like we're all speculating after our, our own ideas and theories. We don't really have a way to prove this. Maybe one day we will. But um, but I know this is actually for those who research multiverses. There are scientists out there that study this. this yeah, and, and, not, and about scientists. So if I can, sorry, if I can interrupt, because there are some scientists that are going to tell you, well, no self-respecting scientist is talking about this stuff, right? I, I know people like that because. Uh, uh, okay, I, I thought it was, uh, it's okay, right, okay. Yeah, we're good. Uh, okay, and uh, so I'm fortunate that I'm surrounded by skeptics, by real, you know, real skeptics, and some are just materialists, the core. So I know that when I talk about something, they'll just dismiss it. They'll, they don't want to talk about it, right? It doesn't matter to them. They just know, no spirituality, nothing, just, you know, materialism. Right, so it's really interesting, but some other scientists, they're definitely open to this possibility, right? That they're um, multiverses, uh, infinite number of realities. So it's actually a lie when someone says that the, no self-respecting scientists. No, it's a lie. There are many scientists. They're very yeah. much respected, and they talk about it. So That's it's either, my, yeah, you know, it's either ignorance or they are doing this on purpose, that trying to manipulate you, that you know, trying to sell you this idea that oh, no, they don't talk about it. No, they do. They do. Do you think that right. this idea of multiverses scares certain people? Like there's oh, a definitely. fear. And maybe definitely. that's why. I mean, even on a comedic level, I'm, <laughs> imagine uh, seeing yourself, right? Your successful version. For example, I played uh, the piano when I was like 10, right? 
But then I stopped. The teacher just wasn't very good, and I really had you know I had to stop. We broke up, so basically that was the uh, uh, there was the um, you know the, it was just it didn't make any sense, right? There was no um, chemistry between us, right? If you wanted to play it that way. So I imagine myself sometimes. What if I met my other self that actually kept me playing, right? Now that would be uh, probably for me here. That would probably make me a bit. Uh, self-conscious I would imagine right because then I would be a virtuoso somewhere else and mm -hmm. here I am my skills are basically non-existent so you know when you think about it that way it's fascinating as well right not just this kind of out there very advanced you know CERN level but the basic right. one as well right just the very but at the same time you could ask your other self I like this idea as well right that you ask your other self that already has for example I want to publish this book my other self has already done that right so I mm -hmm. ask my other self, can you tell me what did you do? What have you done, right? Can you explain it to me? That's mm -hmm. fascinating as well, right? Totally, right, to absolutely. Yeah. And, and we do, we, we take many, I played the piano as well as a child. We have, we have a lot in com common with our childhood, but we have lots of different paths that, that if, you, if, if everybody yeah. just sits back for a moment and thinks about their life, their childhood, their you know, early 20s, all that kind of, all these different paths. Oh, that yeah. have been taken even when it comes so down to like I don't have children I don't you don't have children either do you no children no. like no, but no. think about all the different <laughs> relationships I don't have kids either but think about all the different relationships you've been on and it been in and if you had stayed with one partner who would then exist from that reality versus going yeah this would uh could I should that right this kind of like uh, it, it's 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 nice but at the same time it could get you kind of depressed yeah. you need to be careful about it because then you realize if I'd known about that you know, so so and so many years before earlier, you know, I would have done, you know what I'm saying, right? This is kind but, of like the journey is where the fun is anyway, not the destination. Yeah. So that that there's another um, theory as well that I want to kind of get into with you a little bit even before we even get into your novel, because um, when you look like again, when you when you look at multiverses, you kind of open up Pandora's box, right? <laughs> like, there's so much to to it, you know. And um, there's this idea that we've been talking a lot about with David Zublick about, you know, in this these banned heretical gospels that reincarnation was taught in the early Christian church. Right. It was very Eastern, Eastern thought. And I, I've, I've been around it a lot with, with the, with the studying in India. And part of me, you know, there's also another theory that, that is not necessarily reincarnation, but it's that your actual soul or whatever we consider to be a soul, that eternal part of you actually splinters off and lives right. all these different lives exactly and so and you're in but and it you're, gets even more complicated if i may add here because you know did dissociative identity disorder right yeah. so what i think about is when someone dies and so let's assume that our consciousness survives what happens to all these personalities right do they integrate what, what what's what's going on here right so mm -hmm. souls yes but even on that level right we have uh, uh different personalities and even on level of one personality, we have, you know, personas, we wear masks, right, et cetera, et cetera. Imaginary friends. What if some friends aren't imaginary? What if it's some sort of dimensional interference, right? It's, it's fascinating. Mm -hmm. And I, I thought about it, actually, that it's all, you know, it fragments itself and it experiences itself, basically, in different realities in an infinite number. Because to me, uh, if I can add here, there are two options, right, the way I see it. There is either oblivion or there is infinite possibility. Mm -hmm. Nothing else makes sense to me. It just doesn't make any sense, right? That, that, but that's my personal view, right? So we have these two options, right? And uh, so if there is uh, this, um, you know, if we survive, then in my opinion, it's, it's infinity, right? Mm -hmm. And um, that, that's how I see it. So I try to uh, connect, link the, um, uh, the atheists and, you know, the um, more metaphysical approach, basically, that way. Yeah. No, absolutely. Makes sense. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I, I agree with you as well. And I, are you familiar? There's a researcher out there by the name of Jason Q. I, I don't know him. I've never um, filmed with him, but we have mutual contacts and I watch him and he's done this crazy amounts of research. And he, right. when he starts to speak, he says stuff sometimes I have to like write it down and go back and look it up. But he talks about how it's just like very matter of flat fact that we, we don't die. Like we don't actually die, you mm -hmm. know? So, if we're changing bodies, then then who's to say we aren't also changing in dimension as well? And this right. is just an aspect of our life that we have we just we are not aware of because they say we only use ten percent of our brain. Well, what happens if we use more of our brain? What happens? Of course. What happens if the other ninety-seven percent of our DNA would become activated? What would we what would we experience? Because we're we're already kind of experience people are experiencing these weird phenomenons anyway. Um, yeah. 
and it does change you when you have an experience like that it does change your perspective a little bit you know um so mm. so what do you think happens when we die from your own personal opinion when our body dies what do you think actually mm. happens Okay, so uh, as I said, I see two options here. It's either it's oblivion, unfortunately, or it's an infinite possibility. I'd say that what I subscribe to the view that whatever we believe would probably happen. So um, that's that's what I think. But with the white light, I also subscribe to the view it could be a trap. I, I don't dismiss it. And to me, it's interesting. I wrote about it in my novel, actually, that what would happen if you just didn't go to that light, right? It's yeah. kind of an iconoclastic concept. And then I, then I imagine, let's say you were incarnate with your knowledge intact of your previous life. How would this, uh, well, it could mess you up, right? Because you couldn't express yourself. And then you would be sub subjected to another process of socialization. Let's say um, I, I die, let's say, and I go to some other dimension. And let's say I get, um, you know, in some other dimension, South Korea, for example, right? Where I'm socialized as a Korean girl, for example, right? And yeah, I remember my previous life. So that would probably be a serious, you know, what's going on, right? So maybe right. that's why we don't remember, but I don't buy this idea that we don't remember because it's for our good. I think there is something else going on here. I, I, I like this, this idea. And um, yeah, so basically that, that's how I see it, right? Um, again, with EVPs, there are many possibilities, right? Let's say it's just some interference. It could be demons, whatever that is, right? Archons, if you want to call it that. Or it could be that, you know, we are actually communicating with uh, some other life forms uh, in other dimensions. Or it could be just our, you know, dead relatives, etc. right? So there are various possibilities here. But for some reason, I like the idea that we are communicating with uh, the alternate reality somewhere. For some reason, I, I think that's, uh, that's a fascinating idea. And there was a show, Fringe, many years ago, I mean, 2012. And they had yep. this um, window of sorts, right, where you could look into other universes without them being aware of it. So perhaps that's what EVPs are in a way. I mean, you know, we could speculate here, and I think that's that's great. Uh, but to me, EVPs do indicate that there could be uh, that it could be some sort of maybe not proof, but it could be telling us there is more, and it could be you know because you can't explain it. Like not every single EVP can be explained. So I think that's right. that's fascinating and worth pursuing, basically. So what, for you, for your own personal life, whatever you care to share, what's the craziest experience that you personally have had where you were like, wait a minute, something weird has happened that's not in our own dimension, if that makes sense. <laughs> what's your craziest experience? Uh, my craziest experience, well, I'd say that Hawaii experience was pretty good, uh, the, the recording there. Uh, there mm -hmm. were some other experiences there as well, because apart from this recording, we did observe some strange people. I mean, it was many years ago, but they were, they kind of appeared, they walked around and then they disappeared. It's difficult to explain because we were in a part, of, I was part of a group, right? And they were, they were not part of this group. They just appeared, walked around, and they're just gone. And we, everyone was, where are they? What's mm -hmm. going on? There is no way that they just could have, you know, just walked somewhere or no, no. It, so it was really, really interesting on that level. Mm -hmm. I, I can't I can't tell you what that was, but you know, I I wasn't the only one who saw it. There are many, many others. That was definitely interesting. There was another case of a possible haunting, and there was a police officer, a detective, who said uh, I don't I don't know if I can say it. I I don't believe this BS, right? Mm -hmm. Basically. Yeah. But I can't dismiss what someone else, my friend, told me, right? His other uh, fellow police officer. Mm -hmm. And uh, that basically uh he got a message from the other officer that there was something going on. And this other officer was terrified, whatever, whatever that was. So that was interesting as well. But fortunately, there were no experiences, you know, that where I get snatched to some other reality, like in my novel, because that would definitely suck, like in this German uh, <laughs> example and so on. But, uh, but to tell you the truth, uh, I don't dismiss anything. I don't uh, ignore anything. I don't. I'm I'm, not, I'm I'm open to any, any possibility, right? But at the same time, I keep my critical senses intact. So right. I'm the kind of person that would tell you this. You need to know about the tax law, and you can talk about the universe, right? I'd yeah. say both are equally as important. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the approach. I'm fortunate to be in an environment where I'm surrounded, as I said, by scientists, by engineers, people who are very much matter of fact, but they still, some of them, are open to various possibilities, right? 
because they, they talk about this division when you have a humanist person and a scientist, right? You know what I'm saying? I don't like this, this division, right? Because first of all, a humanist is someone who is a learned person, mm -hmm. but they see it as someone, oh, you know, you don't care about physics, you don't care about that. And that's a good example as well, because um, when I talk about it, some people say, physicists, they say, well, why are you interested in this? I thought, you know, you were just, uh, you know, you liked writing and so on. They, they can't add it together. The world. So to some, yeah, to some people, that's just too difficult. They can't do that. So that's uh, uh, definitely an intriguing aspect of our psychology as well. Yeah, and I feel like that's kind of been um, pushed on us a little bit to divide the two. If you look back at our, our ancient ancestors, yeah. they married the two. Definitely. You know, um, that, and it's, I come up from a family of doctors and um, mm. they're scientists, right? Doctors are scientists, but I find that doctors for the most part tend to be this, the group of scientists that be believe more in the spiritual aspect because of things they've witnessed in their, yeah. and there's certain things that don't, yeah. it's all practicing medicine and you could have 10 patients that respond to one treatment and then have this yeah. one patient that has this different response and then you know, doctors will say, even the atheist doctors will say, like the people that pray heal the faster, heal the fastest. Right. So is exactly. that power of the mind, or is there a, you know? And and I will say too, one of my favorite quotes is from Aristotle, and it was, "It is a sign of an intelligent mind when you can entertain an idea without accepting it." Without accepting it, we, yeah, that's. Uh, I think that's we something. lost that. Yeah, where we're able, yeah, you know, to. Yeah, we're a lot. There are many people who can't do that, unfortunately, as you I know. I know. It's really difficult. Yeah. So, uh, so when, 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 you know, when there is a party or, you know, something like that, <laughs> I usually avoid it uh, unless I really <laughs> know that someone can listen to this because, you know, people get defensive really fast, especially about God. And I mm -hmm. called God uh, a self-aware, sentient, infinite intelligence, for example, right? Uh, and to some people, that's just, uh, no, no, they, they, they don't understand what are you talking about, right? So, so no, I, I avoid it. If I if I see yeah. that, and, and you can tell really fast, right? If you, if you know what to look for, you can tell really fast. Is it judging people? Yes, on some level, but we judge. Okay, let's be honest. I, mean, I don't buy into this. Uh, we don't judge. Yes, we do judge. Okay, even when you say you don't judge, you actually you are, yeah. do judge at the same time. So yeah. yeah, and some judgment is good. Some judgment saves your life. You know. So. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, actually, when I was in, when I was in China. Uh, there was this, uh, they have the uh, rickshaw, um, it's like a three-wheeler, uh, you know, it kind of, uh, and there was this guy and he wanted me to go, just for some reason, he wanted me to go somewhere, you know, get on that rickshaw and go somewhere. And I, I, got, I got this vibe, no, no, don't do that, right? He was really, because usually they're really friendly and when you say no, they, they you know, they just um, ride or drive away. But this guy just was insistent, right? But I knew, you know, that, uh, my intuition told me, stay away. So I... Uh, my, my Mandarin isn't very good, but, but he understood the message, right? So it's uh, yeah. some really strange people out there, basically. <laughs> yeah, and we all have that sixth sense we need to uh, pay attention to because um, cause it's important in situations like that. That's good judgment. When you feel yeah, that something's not definitely. right and you need to leave, like, that's a good judgment call because you don't, you, that's, that's your, your, your critical thinking. Um, you know, uh, Bishop Larry Gator said once that like God anoints you when you're born, whatever you believe God is, when you're born, you're anointed with consciousness. And that yeah. consciousness is part of your critical thinking skills that allows you to to develop your own ideas, which I think we, we, we lack big time in our society today, this idea of critical thinking, of being able to, yeah. and, and that's what I see about science too anyway. Science, in my opinion, I'm not a scientist, but in my opinion, it's taking a theory and then doing everything you can to disprove that theory. So you can right. find solid proof you can for a theory, you know, and um, and yeah, that's I, 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 I love I love I love what you say here because it is and it is fun to, to explore all these topics because we've all experienced something abnormal in our lives that we we can't. Yeah, I met I met two kinds of scientists. So one type was uh, or is the materialist that mm -hmm. rejects, you know, not, don't even bother, you know, in talking to them. They just don't care. And the second yeah. type is open to possibilities. They mm -hmm. still have this mind which I like, you know, the critical mind, but they're yep. open to various possibilities. So they have no problem. Let's say you can have a scientist and an artist at the same time. And to mm -hmm. some people, that's just, what do you mean, a scientist and an artist? That's impossible, right? No, of course it happens. I mean, it's, it's, it's yeah. okay, right? It's, it's a not, we're not, you know, it's uh, not black and white. There are sometimes there are shades of gray in life, right? Absolutely. That, that's what happens. In fact, in most cases, probably. And to yeah. some people, that's just... Uh, they can't they can't wrap their minds around it it's too difficult right. they're, they're, they can't do that 
that's what I actually my favorite part about like human beings and getting to know people is that you 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 can't put a person into this box because every person I've gotten to know in my life there's just so many different facilities within them and there's that's so many different That's true Bryce but at the same time I'm sure you met people that just, they just see you and they say oh yeah you're this you're that yeah. oh, absolutely. Actually, I had yes. people I, I told them I told them uh, please don't classify me like this and they say they told me well, yeah, but I classified you like this, and that's that's what you are. That's who you are. Like they are so full of themselves, they're you know this high horse, and it's just right. uh, that's how they are. And they usually, you know, narcissists, kind of like this, you know, the kind of yeah. personality disordered people. Uh, so yeah, it's it's kind of tricky. You know, I usually try to distance myself or keep contact if I can, but you, you don't always, you know, you can't always do that, right? So it's more difficult. Then. And just so you guys know, we were probably going to do a part two to get into like narcissism and. Yeah, sorry, I mentioned this here. No, 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 that's fine. That's fine. I just want to let people know because I'm actually going to do a and I, and I talked to Adam about it because we had talked about narcissism and I've I know I've brought that up on the channel a couple of times. It's a very that's fascinating to me, like personality disorders like yeah, that, borderline personality. Fascinating. very fascinating i've had experience i know you've had experience so i totally understand what oh, you're yeah. saying yeah. and we are gonna we are gonna do a part two on that and get into that because we see that a lot in our world today but yeah most people who are pretty healthy minded and not like toxic they'll have you know people are so fat their psychology is so fascinating because they'll have so many different um shades of their personality and you're right you'll have somebody in there doing microbiology and then they'll come home and they'll paint all night exactly. you know or, like my grandfather was a surgeon. He would do surgery all day and then he'd come home and he had a library full of poetry and he'd sit in his office and read poetry. You know, right. so you see this like this yin and yang in people and to marry the left side of the brain and the right side of the brain together to have a more balanced approach. And if I, if I may add about yin and yang, uh, I actually, uh, I, I exchanged emails with a Korean woman and she told me that actually the reason that, for example, in China and Korea and other Asian countries where girls are still at a disadvantage in many cases is because of that yin, yin and yang. She said that yang is masculine, right? That mm -hmm. it represents the summer. And mm -hmm. yin, she said it's feminine because it represents passivity, etc. Stereotypical feminine traits. That's how she explained it. And that's why she said that this uh, discrimination that takes place in Asia, even today, it predates Confucianism. So it's even older than Confucianism. And I oh. found it fascinating, right? Because, you know, yeah. there, there, even in China, even today, you have this um, the ratio, this imbalance is there, right? Um, they're not as dramatic as it was, but it's still there. So that's what I thought. Uh, that's you know, interesting. That. Yeah. That's super interesting. Well, let's get into your novel. Um, so sure. again, Adam has written this incredible novel. Like it's Thank he's you. an Thank incredible you. writer, and we—it's my mission to to get him out there because it is the Thank publishing you. world is a very—I know it's a very hard world to get into. Oh yeah, um, really fun. So, really and I'm, but I'm hoping as we, you know, my my whole thing. Uh, Ram Dass, who was a spiritual teacher, he used to say, "We're all just walking each other home. Like we're all you, we're all Very here fun. together as humanity." And our and our job is to like I mean Adam's Adam's novel if y'all have not read it I mean it's unbelievable and so I kind of wanted you to to get kind of the story out when did you let's first start talk about let's talk about the matter first when did you first start writing this novel and when did you have the idea to say I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna create this story based around this concept right well many many years ago I was always a curious person I never had this moment when I woke up as some people say I was always like that. And uh, I just kept writing and, you know, I kept changing writing. It wasn't a process like a linear process. It really took years, right? And I probably could still edit it in places here and there. You could always do that. But at some point, you got to say, well, that's what this is. You've got to move on because, you know, you can just do it and do it forever, right? And it's not going to get you anywhere. So in my case, it was a continuous process. It was many, many years, right? Just changing this, changing that, you know, adding this, adding that. Posting it here, let's see what people say. And usually very positive, right? Mm -hmm. On Reddit, etc. And then we, just moving on, right? But I was never really satisfied. Something was missing. So I just added this added here. And after a while, I said, okay, that's uh, more or less what I wanted, right? Because I, I'm my worst critic. And so it's, you know, you always try to find some, uh, you, know, you know, flaws, as you mm -hmm. probably can imagine when, when you write. But yeah, I'm... I'm satisfied. Let's put it this way. Yeah. And I, I thank you for, really for kind words. Really mean a lot. Thank you. He, I, Adam does a really good job in the story of, of talking about these, creating this fictional story, these fictional people, but using these, this concept of multiverse in a way that's very understandable for the reader. Yeah. That does a good job of using a fictional story to help open people's minds up to possibilities that are represented right. 
the because school. that's what's fascinating about it. You know, when we're talking about the multiverse, it's fictional, but at the same time, it could be real, right? Because mm -hmm. we're talking about infinity. So it's uh, it's fascinating. And I, I like this uh, ambiguity, this, you know, when you read this, you kind of, well, is there some truth to this, right? And people ask me about it, and that's what I want, because, uh, you know, you try to, uh, you see some parallels, you, you know, and that's, that's personally what I like. What I don't want to drag it out too much, like in some right. case of TV shows, for example, where they talk about, there is one TV show, I won't mention which one, where they talk about a certain person's identity, right? Who this person actually is. And uh, we don't know. It just keeps going on and going on forever and ever, right? So I want to avoid that as well. But, yeah, I wanted to... Uh, some people just didn't like the fact that, you know, the two daughters, why two daughters, maybe, you know, especially women for some reason. They, they weren't very, very pleased with it. I don't know why. But but I, I thought it was a good idea, right? Uh, yeah. But you just have uh, two daughters there. And, um, yeah, I, I really like it. And, and to me, that was um, an intellectual exercise, right? Mm -hmm. My mind needed this, uh, you know, this kind of, like, like mind yoga, let's say. Yeah, <laughs> exploration. Yeah, exploration. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You're giving the, the reader the opportunity to, to formulate their own critical thinking skills. You're yes. not, that's, that's one thing I, I, again, if I could redo our educational system and bring it back to a more um, organic way of, of people learning, it's teaching people how to think not what yeah. to think and, yeah, yeah, and you're exactly. picking up these these really like in-depth theories in your story that is giving people the opportunity to to explore that on their own and develop their and, and reflect on their own experiences in life and that's a an, that's why reading is so important because it gives people that ability i, I actually you know? had a, an american scientist who uh ab absolutely decimated it in terms of uh editing process right he edited it in various places but he was a scientist and it was really useful because he was really a polite, polite scientist, right? But he really showed me, okay, Adam, do this, do this, do that, right? It was a great, great experience and a great contribution in that sense because that's what... I like scientific minds for that reason, right? Mm -hmm. Because uh, that's what I needed. And that's exactly what I got. It was really painful in places, right? Because he had a lot of red, you know. <laughs> but <laughs> the end result was really, really good, right? Yeah. Yeah, so will you, so will you give, um, without giving your story totally away, will you give our viewers like a synopsis of your story without giving the, the end away or, you know, just what, what it is about? Right. Well, of course, it's about the multiverse. That's the main point. And I, I know that the idea of the multiverse is kind of cliche. It's everywhere, right? It's uh, wherever you look. But the fascinating part about the multiverse is that you can always add something else there because it's infinite, basically, right? So there's always more that you can add. And the main concept is the euthanizer, right? Euthanizers are basically individuals who live in dystopian realities. That means like, you know, well, ours kind of now, uh, evil sort of dark places. And they <coughs> gain access to technology, in some cases their personal uh, skill. And they see other realities and their other selves have better lives, right? So again, the concept we're familiar with. And then the detailed surveillance begins. So they study them. Right? They observe them. They're every single detail, cultural customs, financials, passwords, everything. And when they're ready, they cross over and they make sure there is no blood left because, you know, you don't want to you know, leave any traces, right? And then they take the body, take it back to wherever they, they've come from, and then they start their new life. So that's, that's the process in a nutshell. But, uh, of course, it contains a lot of psychological issues, psychological issues, right? So they're not necessarily psychopaths. No, no, it's not the case. Mm -hmm. uh, in, many, in, in some cases, they are psychopaths, but not always, right? So this is fascinating to me. Actually, I wanted to uh, spend more time on this aspect of surveillance because I think that's really, really interesting, where you observe the other side. The other side isn't aware of it, of course, right? Right. And you detail every, every, everything. No, not just, you know, because everything matters, right? Potentially, even the language, of course. And because I'm a linguist, I... I think that <laughs> we're lacking in that department, <clears throat> sorry, and uh, so I, I study this as well, right? Different words, different accents, different dialects, right? Uh, where it changes. English, for example, why would someone speak the same English, right? In French, what I liked was that Manhattan was spelled with a single T, for example. That's so, but I get much, much deeper, right? Because I see different words and different expressions or even different languages that evolve very, very differently, right? So it's the same English, but for example, you feel kind of like you're a you second language speaker suddenly, right? Even though you speak English, they speak English, but it's different, right? So how yeah. do you make sure 
they don't notice that, right? I think that's fascinating. And I don't understand why there aren't more shows that talk about it or books for that matter that aren't more popular and they, they mention this. So I, I focus on this and uh, I focus on other aspects, for example, where one child is born in another dimension, but this child knows that some other child, uh, the sibling, was born in other dimension. Would there be discrimination? Would there be some sort of rivalry, right? Mm -hmm. So I focus on it as well. And so there are many, many aspects to this. And of course, there is the, um, I also focus on the oppressed, right, mm -hmm. and disenfranchised, that, in, that there are special divisions in other dimensions, mm -hmm. in, in particular in one dimension that searches other dimensions and helps people that are in some kind of distress. Yeah. Uh, it could be uh, they're suicidal or it could be that they're in some sort of, you know, something is going on in their lives. And if it's determined that they would be useful, valuable assets, let's say, they are invited. And I have this concept of interdimensional Facebook, right? Mm -hmm. So they connect and this, this is how they surveil. And, um, and yeah, that's, that's what I like as an idea. And of course, then you cross over. You are like this refugee. Of course, it's a very simplified process right now that I'm explaining. And then right. this, this new life starts. And I really like this idea, right? Because we are focused on and understand that, that we need to fix this reality. And I get that, right? Mm -hmm. But I like this idea that uh, there, were, there was an architect and he said, uh, I don't remember his name right now, but he said, uh, make the existing model obsolete, right? And create a new model, right? So to me, that's, that's what you do, right? When you imagine this, uh, this other reality, right? Where, where things are different, you don't have to fix it. It's already there. So I also focus on the aspect of, uh, of psychological aspect. Like when you cross over, suddenly you realize there is a different air. Uh, you know, there's no radiation. Or even if you have some problems, let's say, with your breathing, suddenly uh, uh, it's not there, right? And it's et cetera, et cetera. So uh, I think that's, or even hangovers, right? right. That you can drink. Uh, and there's, yeah. uh, there, there's actually, there, it's happening in this reality, right? There are some, uh, there were, I'm not sure about now, that you, they would come to your place and they, they would just, um, there is this drip feed of sorts and they would just uh, make yeah. the hangover go away really fast. So I kind of uh, play on that as well, right? So there yeah, are, <laughs> so there are m many, many possibilities here, definitely. And of course, uh, you know, in terms of, let's say, high heels, as I mentioned, or stilettos, there are different histories as well. It develops differently, clothing, etc. So it covers a lot of various uh, aspects, right? Where I try to focus on, I try to link the esoteric, the metaphysical, the arcane with the material, right? The everyday, yeah. which we experience. Because I realize people don't want to listen to some it's so lofty, you know, there are some people that like it, but most people just say, you know, forget it. No, I, I want to keep it real. I want to keep it dark, comedic, right? So there is like some stand-up potential there. It's dark. Uh, so like, I mix things, right? So uh, because I know, I know what, that people don't like it when it just flop, basically, right? It's just uh, too simple. Yeah. Some people like it, but let's be honest, we are in, in such a twisted reality right now that I don't think that it's realistic to expect it, right? Uh, yeah, so that's... Well, there you go. You look think about talk about multiverses and our reality. This whole past year has been just twisted and changed. And, you know, this time last year, I would have thought you were crazy if you said the whole world was going to lock down. And so yeah, that kind exactly. of gives you through into a multiverse as well. Like what you think, you know, I always say, like, I know there's that a, a saying that our, a, opinions are like assholes. Everyone's got one. But also <laughs> opinions are, 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 also, are also variant to change. And so for people watching yeah. that are like, totally overwhelmed by this idea of a multiverse like if you just sit back even as an american and you have american roots as well that you know for me as an american i am a com combination mostly of of european ancestry and right. um and so if one person in my lineage had not gotten on the on the boat when he or she did i wouldn't yeah. be here today so that's another idea of a multi like, like these different realities, or maybe in one reality, this one ancestor didn't get on the boat, and so exactly. my is now shifted. Exactly, that's uh, when my when my maternal grandfather he had uh, uh, he was born in New Jersey, mm -hmm. and he went he came to Poland with his uh, older sister and his uh, mother and father. Mm -hmm. If that never, if he'd never done that, or if they'd never done it, I, I wouldn't have been born. Right, the same right. the same process. So even though it was tragic on one level because they, they couldn't go back because of the war, the Second World War, and then the communist regime, it was interesting in itself because they said, okay, you are from the U.S., but we are also giving you the Polish citizenship and we don't recognize your U.S. citizenship, right? But that's fascinating in itself, just how regimes work. And I right. focus on this as well in, in the novel where I talk about, you know, psychopathic aspects of 
regimes and how it works mm -hmm. because it's um, it's fascinating and it and there are many people talking about it but when you actually experience it I kind of experienced it because you know Poland was kind of like end of the 80s right so it's mm -hmm. kind of like way I, I kind of experience it but still the mentality is there and mm -hmm. it's very 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 different mentality um, that is very difficult really difficult to explain to people who are not let's say Polish right I, I barely understand it let alone someone who's from the US <laughs> right right so. well you know it's funny my, my boyfriend's grandfather left Poland around uh, that time because of what was happening in Poland exactly that's um, what happened that, the opposite happens most of the time yeah, that's why people are so surprised what, what are you talking about they, they went to Poland What's going on here, right? It's, I understand what, what you, I get what you're saying, and it, and that's why it's, I find it so fascinating. Like for example, you get a, a person who is a, a Polish person, and they are subjected to this enforced Germanization process, right? For example, and what happens to their minds, right? What, what what's going on? It's uh, that's why I like to toy around, play around with it, right? With the, these ideas, uh, because they are trying to answer what is identity, how does mm -hmm. it change, right? And it sometimes it gets dark. It gets, it's funny, it's dark in places. I could tell you that if I had some directing skills, like if I could direct a movie, I would, I would really, I could really direct a great movie, right? If I could be really, but I can't because I have no skills like that. But I thought about it, right? If I could find someone, let's say, who can, you know, write a screenplay, right? That's how, that's how you say it. I think that would be a really, really awesome idea, right? Because, uh, you know, it's, it's, um, I think it's a great idea, basically. There are, of course, uh, certain concepts that are cliches. Mm -hmm. people popular culture but it, it's actually an advantage because uh, people are familiar with it right mm -hmm. so that's that's why the way I like it so what are your thoughts on like extraterrestrial or aliens do you a do you believe they exist and B do you, if they exist do you think that they're on a different dimension and they're able to travel within our our dimensions right yeah I, I think they do exist definitely uh, I was actually uh, I was investigating the unexplained. Let's let's put it this way, if you can call it investigation, because it's uh, well, yeah, you could call it investigating. But I definitely believe yes uh, that they do they do exist. But of course, uh, the question of their interference and level of interference, right? It, that's the question, right? Because you could talk about the ziggurat or ziggurats, right? Where it was said that when you when they walked at the top, there was this alien figure, and there was the hybridization process, for example. That, Mm -hmm. uh, women from Earth, they were the mm -hmm. gods uh, from somewhere else, right? Or you could say that maybe it started in the 50s. I, I don't believe it. If it, it actually occurred, I believe that the process of interference it would, goes back thousands of years, right? Yeah. And, but that's, that's uh, so I, I see it as, as, as such. But it's, uh, they're, they're definitely, they definitely exist, right? They, yeah. There's no doubt whatsoever in my mind. But the question is, what is the level of interference? Whether it's just that they are coming here to watch, was there infiltration or perhaps even creation that they were responsible for creating human humanity as we know it, right? The so-called uh, panspermia, right? Where life just moves from one place to another, like one right. planet to another. So, um, so I would definitely, and I actually have a sort of a funny moment in my, my novel about it, reptilians and so on. Uh, where where I mention uh, you know how some reptilians end up, uh, so so yeah because reptilians are kind of popular in in our culture right so yeah. um, and grace, uh, and it's uh, and actually I, what I find kind of funny and interesting the Denver International Airport I think mm -hmm. you know they have these uh, murals and they they kind of make fun of this so some people of course say that well they're telling us the truth right because they yeah. they you know just uh, they actually made us some there were some posters where there was a great alien he was like hush hush you know just uh the, the, don't talk about it you know see no evil hear no evil you know stuff like that yeah. it's kind of well it's kind of tricky right because you could say uh, as a typical psychologist probably would say well people just want to have a more interesting life right that's what you usually get but yeah they just make this stuff up but there are people who would tell you that no it's uh anything's possible right and I'm more inclined to believe that. For example, when you talk about missing people, right? Because there are the, the so-called the missing 411. Um, yeah. What I find interesting is that there are so many possibilities, right? If, of course, if it's really the case that it's so convoluted as it's presented, that in terms of, uh, uh, you know, the number of missing people, right? But it's, uh, so there is definitely more going on than we think. Mm -hmm. uh, the question is the level of how much you know what's yeah. really how you know the depth of this more let's put it this way yeah. there was even um, a prime minister of russia 
Medvedev, and he kind of joked about this black box. A journalist asked him, he's, yeah, that's my black box, something like that. And I get briefed on aliens, right? This kind of like was, but it was kind of like a joke. But you can't really tell it. It was a joke, you know. That's 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 how you that's how you do it. Are um, you being serious? Like, yeah, no, I. Yeah, there I there was there was yeah there was there was like a, 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 you can find it on YouTube, but I don't remember. It was years ago, right? It was uh, me to you did it. I one hundred percent would agree with you on that. And for those who know, like biblically in the book of Enoch, um, which was a book that was taken out of the Bible, which hmm, wonder why they took it out. It uh -huh. talks about that. It talks about these beings that mated with with earthly. And I know I've because Nephilim, of course, it, right? I don't have any right rhesus factor in my blood, and that and that whole concept of all these different blood types. Where do they come from? Were we engineered by other exactly. beings that live in other dimensions? And you're right because the uh, cosmic law is the law of free will. So how right. much interference can there really be if we're not giving our consent? Um, but mm -hmm. then it goes on, and it's funny, the Denver airport, I've got, I have the Denver airport on my list of things to cover, because that's a big one. Um, and yeah. it's funny, a lot is happening in the United States. So I've been watching all these decoders who talk about that airport um, before I do my episode, because I want to hear more about what they have to say about these de these military decoders of what the Denver mm -hmm. Russ, if I can just add about the free will, right? Because mm -hmm. it kind of touches on karma, and mm -hmm. we kind of so that's what I, I have a strong opinion about because that uh, that they are supposed to tell us, right? The powers that be, what they're going to do. Well, okay, mm -hmm. that's one level, but another level, I see a, a child, a poor child, right? And next to this poor child, there is a rich kid, right? Mm -hmm. uh, just just let's say you know, another side of the fence. So. If my understanding is correct, then this poor child is paying for its sins or his or her sins, so to speak. And this is a karmic debt, right? Never made sense to me, right? This child doesn't even remember if that's indeed the case, right? What happened? Right. So this this just this feels like the Franz Kafka, you know, the uh, the trial. I think that was the book where they you don't know what you're accused of. You're taken somewhere and you're praised and st you're standing in front of this tribunal and what's going on or what, what, what's happening right mm -hmm. so it doesn't make sense to me at the same time i do realize that people need this right that, yeah he's gonna get his uh you know his punishment or her punishment right but i think it's more complex than that i, I don't really like this idea on a simple level but then again i do realize there are people who definitely deserve this kind of um, mm -hmm. treatment right mm -hmm. but it's just too simplistic because it makes the universe, turns the universe into this kind of uh, fascistic uh, uh, entity, right? That doesn't give you any choice. You just, you just okay, this is what it is. This is karma, end of story, right? It's yeah. like the tutorial, another level, a cosmic level, as they call it, right? Yeah. Well, makes my sense. understanding of karma from India is uh, that it's just, it's just your work. That's all it is. It's the stuff you have to work through. And the more I started to, to look at karma that way, it started to make more sense because it's like, oh, okay, so let's just say for a lack, you know, let's just say there are multiple lives that we live. And in one life, we're poor, we're in the slums, the next life, we're wealthy. And we have all these different things that we learn through each experience to grow our soul. Um, but yeah, it is, yeah, for someone to have to pay, like, to pay for something they did in a past life when you're a completely different um your your brain is different. Your being is different, and the exactly. next life does not make sense at all. Yeah, it, if you remembered it, then maybe then yes. But yeah. uh, if you don't remember it, I mean that's that's. I mean, you could really you know we could speculate about it. Of course, we we don't really know what's going on. Maybe on some other level, we do remember, right? You could argue that that's the case, but it's it gets kind of uh, intangible. You can't really uh, you know do anything with it. So it's. Uh, but I understand the idea, and I understand the appeal of the idea itself. Right. right? It's uh, in some cases it would probably be beneficial, but but again, you know, it's uh, it's tricky, right? It's tricky. Again, well, it's all that part of that Pandora's box where it's it's it's. And I actually, I know because we talk about fear, where people get like scared and afraid of this a little bit. I find it so freaking fascinating because there's just so many different possibilities, and it just makes it. It brings just so much more. Um, uh, just substance to our existence in this this exploration of trying to figure out together as humanity like what is really going on and what what is actually happening to us and and all that kind of stuff because it's just it is so super fascinating and I know we're coming up on an hour now and again we are gonna Adam is gonna be coming back guys so tell everybody the title of your book um, and and your contact and all that stuff for publishers or people who know publishers 
or can send your book, and, and any publishing okay, experience right. you have in the past, go ahead and talk about that as well. Right. So uh, the book is called Euthanizers, Escaping Hazmat Demons. Hazmat Demons, because it's, uh, you know, it's uh, con connected to what's happening now, so hazmat suits, right? So I imagine, you know, hazmat demons, it kind of fits in some cases, right? They look kind of like demons when you, when you look like, you know, what's, what's, uh, and it's kind of important in my book on, on some level where they, my protagonists are trying to escape. Uh, you know, demons. I mean, they're not literal demons, just look like, you know, in hazmat suits, right, like walking around, uh, burning down houses uh, of the infected. So that's, that's, the, uh, that's the reason I, I mentioned, you know, that's why, that's how I call it. And euthanizers, of course, is the, um, the reference to the, um, you know, the, the idea itself. Because there is a literary agent uh, in the book, and she does, she is uh, an agent for the family, that they are, they're euthanizers, but this, this agent, of course, doesn't believe that they're the euthanizers, because, of course, who would, right? So she right. creates these uh, psychological defenses, right? It's just fiction, it's just uh, whatever, right? Yeah. Obviously, right? And they, yeah. they kind of they kind of like it. They kind of laugh at this because it's you know oh she doesn't believe us right. We can tell it truth, but that she doesn't know she doesn't believe us right. So I like this this idea. Uh, I wrote fifty seven articles for the oldest English language newspaper in South Korea, the Korea Times. Uh, fifty seven articles and really a vast array of topics, and I'm really grateful for it. Uh, I hope that number fifty eight. Article number 58 will be published relatively soon, but of course I never know because there's the editorial process and it's not up to me, right? But mm -hmm. there is a chance, and of course I also mentioned my novel there whenever I get a chance, so this is definitely something I'm proud of. And you can find my novel on Snippet, right? My novel Snippet on Facebook, uh, Escaping Hazmat Demons, as one, one word, uh, when you go on the Facebook pages. Uh, Perhaps you could, uh, you know, just maybe you could in include it somewhere. Like yep. I, I sent you. I'll right put here. it all down in the description box okay, below. Great. Yep. Uh, sure. Yeah, just a snippet, right? Just, just a snippet there. And yeah, so, so, and of course, my contact. Maybe it would be easier just to put it, uh, you know, somewhere uh, in the uh, message because I can yep. say, of course, here. But you know, yep. my, my my Polish last name is probably uh, I could spell it out, but it's probably easier if you just. Uh, I'll put, yeah, I'll also put a link down yeah. in the description box below where people can just Thank just Thank copy you, it from there and stuff too. Because we really, guys, like his his novel is really good. It's a very, very, very well, um, and it takes a lot of talent to be able to 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 tackle such as. Because I always find fault, you know, when I read it, I always find some flaws, and I it's always nice when someone tells me that it's uh, well written because I always think, oh, there's something missing here, you know, you, get, you know what, what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. So it's always. We're our uh, own worst. I trust me. I know it took me. It takes me forever to edit sometimes. So I always want to reshoot stuff. But <laughs> we are always our own worst critics. And Adam's work is it's really very good. It's it's easy. It's it's easy to read in the sense that you get sucked into the story. Right, and we and that, that's that was my intention. Yeah, yeah, was, that's a sign of a really good writer. When you can, re I love to read. I'm always reading something, and when you're able to read a book and forget that you're actually reading because this, you're so invested in the story. And, and Adam is very. That takes a lot of talent, guys, to be and able. And of to course, if someone has comments or whether it's positive or negative, doesn't matter. Um, you know, I welcome any comments you have. That's great. Uh, you can always let me know. Uh, you know, it's always good to grow. So feel free to let me know whatever you think. Uh, as long as it's not, you know, personal <laughs> attacks, <laughs> that's okay. I, I right? actually have a rule about that. I will not, and on this channel, I am same as you. I'm open to hearing everybody's opinion and why they feel a yeah, certain yeah. way. <laughs> but yes, if anybody attacks anybody personally, I delete the comment and usually block the person because that is not okay. That is not. Yeah, it's not even about being true. sensitive, but you know, when someone does it, it's like an invitation for others, and it's kind right. of you know, and, and YouTube can ban the channel, and that wouldn't be <laughs> good. Yeah, so. yeah, and, and it's not, well, just for humanity's sake. It's not when we're discussing ideas, we're looking at at opinions on the on the topic at hand, not not about the messenger bringing the, the topic, you know. So right. I get that a lot when going through the, the missing books of the Bible. I get attacked a lot. Oh, um, I can imagine. I can I imagine get get a lot of religious yeah. Uh, fanatics. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I'm I, like, nobody here is saying, uh, arguing about God. It's about looking at these books and just exploring them. And they might be fake. Who knows? But we're just looking at them. It doesn't hurt to, to again, Aristotle saw, said it's a sign of an intelligent mind when you can entertain an idea without accepting it. And just give yeah. your, yes, exactly, I agree. People can give their opinions on a topic and why they feel the way they feel, but without shooting the messenger, without, you know. <laughs> the process, right. This, yes. This yeah, is that's, not, that's multiverse important. is not, it's not, multi, multiverse is not Adam's theory, it's not my theory, it's been around no, for it's a it's been long. around probably for thousands of years. Yes. I mean, if you look at 
Plato, right? Uh, the right. shadows on the wall, right? Like the cave, like the shadows, etc. So it's it's been around for thousands of years. So in case someone you know, wants to say, no, it's not our idea, right? But no. we can do a lot with it. That's the point because right. throughout you know, history, like you had Hugh Everett, you had you know other people. Uh, so it, and of course Hawking. And mm -hmm. so it's yeah, it's 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 always been there basically in yeah. some way. We're just expanding on something. It's not like we woke up one day and we're like, I think I'm going to create a theory. No, this is something yeah, that you could argue that the you know multiverses were always they're just like psychopaths. They're probably always there. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, exactly, exactly, exactly. Yeah, crazy so part. yeah, and I yes, again, um, guys, look in the description box, find all the information to Adam there, and I'm going to include other videos from our channel that talk about multiverses as well. Um, I know we've talked about it on David Zublik's channel. There's just so many fascinating stories, and I think, Adam, you will find more people are fascinated out there about this topic than not, because we have all had experiences in our life where we go, oh Glad my God, Glad to be a crazy. source of inspiration. Glad to be a source of inspiration if, yeah. I, if I can. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And Adam will be back on the channel, guys, so look out for him. And I know you talked about possibly opening up a YouTube channel too, or is that you that said you were possibly? Uh, I, I could. I, I'm considering it. I think that's the only way that, uh, one of the ways that can really, you know, move things in the right direction, uh, basically, because everyone is in YouTube. I mean, it's, you know, been around for 15 years, so basically yeah, it's really kind of the main, right, so it's really, it's really useful in many, you know, because it really gets yeah. the word out, people can see it. I mean, look at this Texas lawyer, right, it's just a, a stupid cat video, and now he's everywhere, like, you know, it's just, <laughs> just, so it's a, just to give you an idea, right. If y'all have not seen that video, I know Adam sent it to me. I have some other people sent it to me. It is hysterical, and the guy, older gentleman. But you know, the kind of this kind of sad part is now, now. Now he's going to be remembered for saying, you know, the sentence, "I am not a cat." Right? <laughs> everything else won't matter. That's everything that everyone will remember. Just, just this, this part. But that's that's the price. You know, that's the price you pay for being a meme, I guess. Yes. <laughs> Uh, well, and the judge was 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 funny. The judge actually tweeted something out about make sure if you if your grandkids are on your computer before <laughs> you make sure you check. Yeah, that's that. that. They were really composed. I mean, that was that was great in itself. <laughs> it was hysterical. Yeah. So yeah, yes, but once you get your YouTube channel up, you let me know. We'll get you out there and we'll spread the word Thank around you. because Adam right. and Adam will work you. really hard on this. So and we are all united together. We're all just walking each other home. Humans, we need other. We need each other. So so you guys go give Adam's novel snippet a. a read i'm gonna put hit like him on facebook and spread Thanks. the word if you have friends that are interested in this topic please direct them to adam's work because this is such a fascinating topic and we will definitely be having adam back on esoteric atlanta so thank you so much adam for being here thank today. you bryce thank you everyone bye bye thanks cheers <laughs> <laughs>